In Washington, a State Department spokeswoman said the U.S. holds the Syrian government responsible for the massacre. But White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said that does not mean U.S. military action is in the offing. You never, and we haven't in this case, uh, removed options from the table. We do not believe that militarization, further militarization of the situation in Syria uh, at this point is the right course of action. Uh, we believe that it would lead to greater chaos, uh, greater carnage. For more, we turn to Gary Dewar, Canada's ambassador to the United States. I spoke with him a short time ago. Ambassador Gary Dewar, thank you very much for talking with us. Well, thank you for having me on. What does Canada accomplish by expelling Syrian diplomats? Well, I think it was we expelled all of the diplomats today. Uh, we think it's again a continuation of our uh, and condemnation of the uh, regime in Syria. Uh, we're obviously horrified, as is the world, of the uh, slaughter of uh, so many innocent people, including women and children in, 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 in Syria. Uh, we've participated in sanctions. Obviously, we want uh, the UN envoy to succeed, uh, but uh, we're taking uh, action, but obviously uh, with the uh, lack of implementation of the ceasefire over and over and over again, we are obviously very, very concerned about the innocent people in Syria. As, as you just heard in that report, President Assad continues to say that this, uh, what happened was a result of terrorists in his country. Well, a number of journalists and a number of other observers stated that it was, they clearly are holding him accountable for uh, these deaths, these uh, murders really. And uh, I think, uh, obviously, the, everyone is calling for verification, but there's a strong, strong evidence uh, and strong belief in the world uh, that he is responsible. And, and in addition, the Russians, who have been part of this, uh, this most recent UN agreement, uh, supposedly ceasefire agreement, they continue to say that both sides are responsible, that it's not just uh, the Assad government, but it's... Uh, the opposition groups? Well, obviously, backing up, uh, we would have preferred uh, Russia to join the other countries on the Security Council with stronger uh, action in Syria. They chose to not participate. That's also been uh, criticized by a number of countries. Uh, we would much prefer a stronger stand by Russia, including uh, after the weekend's events. Uh, they have said they want third-party verification and independent verification. Having said that, I think most of the independent observers right now ha have spoken, and uh, certainly Canada uh, shares their assessment of how this happened and who is responsible. Uh, Ambassador Dewar, there's, Dewar, there's some discussion now about a so-called Yemen-like solution where, uh, where, as in Yemen, the, the President Assad might be uh, might agree to leave, others in his government would step up. Are you hearing anything about any sort of an agreement like that? I haven't heard that. Obviously, the reports come out about different options uh, for the implementation of the position that Canada and the United States share, that Assad must go, and uh, there's different options to do that. Uh, the, obviously, we prefer a diplomatic solution for his departure uh, from Syria. Uh, I'm not aware of the specifics of that, but people have floated all kinds of ideas. Uh, they've, there's been other op-ed pieces about Russia taking greater responsibility for the situation and taking greater leadership, but so far uh, that certainly hasn't taken place either. What more does Canada believe needs to be done? I mean, the U.S. position is uh, it's, it's not the right moment or it isn't the right situation to send in military forces. That's Canada's view as well? Well, we... That's, that's Canada's view as well. We're, we're going to work with the United States and our uh, European countries and other countries uh, in trying to deal with uh, the options uh, for Syria. Uh, we did deal uh, and work together with the United States and European countries on Libya, uh, but to just take the Libyan situation and transfer it over to Syria, you can't do that. The United States believes that. We believe that. Uh, we work together in that situation to protect uh, people, uh, but we had a, a path forward. Uh, this one is a much more complicated issue. I wish it wasn't, and I wish it was... Uh, I mean, it's clear that innocent people are being 
killed, and that is in itself for all of us, uh, all of us that believe in humanity, I mean, anybody that, a parent or anyone else that sees the slaughter of young children and, and families, it's just horrific, it's horrible. Uh, we obviously want to see uh, the, uh, the diplomatic solutions to implement the ceasefire, but it's obviously not working to date. If, if it's not working, then what more has to be done or should be done, do you think? We've got to continue to work as a world community. Uh, there's more like-minded countries working together to try to find a solution. Sanctions, diplomats, uh, sanctions that are resulting on tremendous economic pressure in Syria. Uh, but uh, we also have to be honest to say the ceasefire hasn't been implemented and that's one of the uh, six conditions uh, the U.S. Uh, U.N. envoy set down in, uh, with an agreement in Syria, and it hasn't been implemented. But how frustrating is it for for Canada, for for you as somebody who works in oh, diplomacy? It's, it's horrible. To, to it's watch horrible for happened. all of us. It's horrible for any world citizen who believes in the protection of innocent people to to not have a ceasefire that was agreed upon broke that ceasefire is broken over and over and over again so we're continuing to use diplomatic means a military option as the u.s has indicated is is not uh, in in right in front of us or are available to us at this point but everybody is talking with each other about how we can be more effective and if the Annan plan, I mean, once everyone is in agreement that the Annan plan isn't working, which is what you've just said, what, what, what's next? Well, he had another meeting today, but the, the bottom line is he's had an agreement on a, a ceasefire as part of the six-point plan, and obviously most in a, uh, independent observers believe, again, over the weekend, uh, the ceasefire did not, uh, was not implemented, and it had horrific consequences for people. How much of an obstacle to finding a solution is it, Mr. Ambassador, that there is, there are apparently serious divisions among the opposition in, uh, in Syria? Well, I or think, is that? Well, question? there's different analysis of the opposition, and there's different people in the opposition. So there's not a, a kind of view that's necessarily clear and unambiguous about the opposition. Having said that, the, the, the real issue here is Assad and his, his inability to implement his word uh, to implement a ceasefire, and the re consequences of that are the killing of innocent people. And that's why the world community continues to talk, discuss, act on sanctions and, and uh, diplomatic uh, relations being severed, uh, but uh, still keeping communications with people in Syria, that, which is also very important. But uh, obviously, it's, it's a horrible situation. It's a horrific incident over the weekend fall, uh, that preceded, was preceded by other horrific situations. Ambassador Gary Doerr of Canada, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you very much.